For the longest time, I've been wanting a PS2 handheld, and back in December last year, a PS2 Android emulator was announced and released, and from the early videos, it looked really legit. So I decided to buy a Poco F3, which is right here, and a GameSir X2 controller, and we're gonna test the PS2 emulator out to see if it's the real deal. Now, just like my last few retro handheld videos, I will be doing a series of videos on the Poco F3, so make sure to subscribe to catch all of my videos. In this video, we're gonna do a quick unboxing, talk a little bit about the tech specs, and then I will test the hardest to run Dreamcast, PSP, and GameCube games. In the following videos, I will look at PS2 emulation, and I will try to test out as many PS2 games as I can. Before I start, I do want to mention this isn't supposed to be a full review of the Poco F3 because I think it's a little bit beyond the scope of this channel. So I just want to focus in on the gaming and emulation side of things. If you're interested in this phone, I highly recommend you check out some reviews before purchasing, and I'll leave some links in the description below. So here it is, the GameSir X2 and the Poco F3 that I bought about six weeks ago, and I filmed this unboxing back in December last year. The GameSir X2 comes in a really nice case, and we'll talk more about this in just a second. Inside the accessories box, there are some thumb grips that make the analog stick a little bigger. The GameSir X2 is really nice in the hand. The back of it is curved, so it's a little easier to grip. The shoulder and face buttons mimic the feel of the Nintendo Switch, not much travel and clicky. The D-pad is the same. The analog sticks have more travel to them than the Switch and take more to push fully, though it's not a bad thing, it just feels a little different. There's a USB-C pass-through on the bottom for power which can't be used for audio. The USB-C port is kinda cool and moves up and down adjusting for the height of the phone as needed. Let's unbox the POCO F3 and use them together. The unboxing experience was rather cool and there's a few interesting goodies in here including a USB-C to 3.5mm adapter and a clear plastic case. Here's the phone itself. The included charger here is a massive 33 watt charger at 3 amps and 11 volts. And there's also a USB-A to USB-C cable. Let's take the cover off the Poco F3 and it is an absolutely gorgeous phone and one of the best I've seen. It's actually incredible how thin and light this thing is compared to the retro handhelds I've been using. Of course, there's economies of scale at work here, and the Poco F3 sells millions of units, so it's going to have amazing design and build quality for much lower prices. There's three cameras on the back and one at the front, and I'll list those out in the specs. The power button and volume buttons are all on the right hand side. Let's do a bit of a size comparison, and here I have a Poco F3 in GameSir X2 next to the Ambinic RG552. And here's a Nintendo Switch as well. Here's a comparison with phones as well. This is an iPhone XR on the left and an iPhone 8 Plus on the right. Going back to the GameSo X2 case, it's actually a little surprising that while the case fits the GameSo X2 nicely, it doesn't fit it with a phone attached. I think that would have been a more elegant solution, so I don't have to take the phone out every time I want to use a GameSir X2 case. Secondly, the GameSir X2 continually drains the battery, if ever so slightly, so it would have been nice if there was a switch to turn off the GameSir X2 so the phone could be left attached. Let's talk about the Poco F3 specs. This is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 CPU manufactured on the 7 nanometer process. It's an 8 core chipset that was announced in January 19, 2021, so it's about a year old now. It has a 1 core Cryo 585 Prime Cortex A77 at 3.2 GHz, 3 cores Cortex A77 at 2.4 GHz, and 4 efficiency cores at 1.8 GHz. We'll get into the benchmarks a little later. For the GPU, it's an Adreno 650 at 670 MHz, and that's capable of 1,372 gigaflops in FP32 calcs, according to Wikipedia. There's also two variants of the phone, in either 6GB and 128GB storage, 
or 8GB RAM and 256GB storage as well as blue, black and white colors. The 6GB model starts at $300 and the 8GB model starts at $375 and that's going to vary slightly around the world. The model I'm using is the 8GB version and I was able to pick it up on sale for $325. If you add the $50 for the GameSir X2 on top, that's almost $400 altogether. So this is definitely not the cheapest way to get into handheld gaming. But you do get a very nice phone and a very versatile controller. One very important thing to note is there's no micro SD card slot. So if you're going to get this phone for PS2, I recommend the 256GB model. Also, given the pricing, it's worth mentioning that Steam Deck performance is way better at $400, though you clearly can't pull that out and use it as a mobile phone. Moving on with the tech specs, there's a beautiful 6.67 inch 120Hz AMOLED display with 1300 nits peak brightness. The display is excellent and has a wider color range than my iPhone XR. The resolution of the screen is 2400 by 1080 and the aspect ratio is 2.22 which means that it's a very long display and that means a smaller 4x3 image. To give you an idea of the size of the 4x3 image on the screen, measuring it I got 4.5 inches on the diagonal, a 16x9 image gave me 5.5 inches on the diagonal and it's noticeably bigger. The battery is a 4520mAh battery and it's been incredibly efficient thus far. I played a solid 3 hours of GameCube gaming just before writing this and only drained 50% of the battery. Finally, I do want to mention it's using Android 11 MIUI 12.5.6 out of the box. I know we've skimmed through the specs quite quickly and I have left some things out so if you have any questions comment below and I'll answer them as best as I can. Checking out the Poco F3 single score geek score, it scored 984 while the top of the line Red Magic 6 with a Snapdragon 888 scored 1131. I've also shown a few other scores here. I also considered getting a Poco X3 Pro which has a Snapdragon 860 and scored 740 for the single core score. One reason I opted for the F3 was that I was already getting a Odin anyway which has a Snapdragon 845 so I didn't want to get two very similar devices. But if you're not getting the Odin, I think the Poco X3 Pro is really good value for money at $240. Once I get the Odin in, I think this will give a really good indication of how the Poco X3 Pro will perform. I've also included the PowerKitty X18S and the Ambinic RG552 to give an indication of the performance of the retro handhelds I've been testing lately. Let's test some games now and a reminder I will be putting up longer gameplay videos on the second channel GymRPG2 so go over and subscribe to that channel. If you're interested in the Poco F3 and the GameSo X2 I have some affiliate links down in the description below. And just for this video because we're using the GameSo X2 with no audio USB-C pass through I'm recording the audio through a Yeti microphone so it may not be as clean as when I take it directly from the audio output port. As a guide to help you, I've also rated them from bad, okay, good and great. For bad, I wouldn't play them on this system. Okay is if you really have no other option. Good has some minor issues and great runs really well. Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. We'll start with Dreamcast on the ReDream emulator. Now, pretty much all Dreamcast games already work great on the PowerKitty X18S and I expect them to work well here. The first game I tested was Crazy Taxi and it works fantastically well at a locked 60 FPS. Crazy Taxi 2 performance is likewise just as good with no issues at all. Now you could play the PSP versions of these which would give you widescreen but it is locked to 30 FPS. Also there's some minor changes to licensed music and brands in that game. Dead or Alive 2 wasn't great on the Ambinic RG552 and I only rated it as ok there, but here the game plays perfectly. I'm showing it at 2x resolution here but you could go higher without issues. Releases. NBA 2K2 is a difficult game to run and on the RG552 it was running very slow. Here it plays perfectly well and is actually a really fun version as long as you don't mind the very old rosters.
Finally, with Soul Calibur, I'm playing this at the highest resolution possible, 3840 by 2880 which is higher than 4K, and it plays it without any slowdown or stutters. I'm blown away at the fact my phone can play Soul Calibur at 4K. Let's move on to PSP, and even for the PowerKitty X18S, there were some difficult to run games, so let's see if those work now. I'm of course using the one and only PPSSPP emulator. Believe it or not, the hardest game to run is DJ Max Portable 3. Well, technically, this is a game that just doesn't emulate well on PPSSPP. And as you can see, the game just implodes after a few runs. God of War Chains of Olympus is one of the hardest games to run. On the RG552, it ran pretty terribly and was pretty much unplayable. On the PowerKitty X18S, if you use the 30fps frame limiter, it wasn't too bad, though the frame rate was still fairly inconsistent. On the Poco F3, it runs like a dream, at 2x resolution and 60fps. There are some dips here and there still, but it's the best I've seen it run. At 3x resolution, there are more frame rate dips, so I would just leave it at 2x. God of War Ghost of Sparta has very similar performance and plays great. Before I fully recommend getting a Poco F3 to play this, I do want to see how this plays on the Odin first. The first game I installed on the Poco F3 was Outrun 2006. This is a game that still has dips on the PowerKitty X18S, particularly early in the track Loading Assets. These dips to 30fps are still evident on the Poco F3, but they transition back to 60fps much faster and it's the best I've seen on a handheld device. Ridge Racer worked pretty well on the PowerKitty X18S, but was slow on the RG552. Here it runs at a locked 60fps. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror plays great. There are some dips, but it's generally very smooth. Toka Race Driver 2 is a weird one. This was unplayable on the RG552, and here it runs at a weird locked 40fps. It just feels off when compared to 30fps games. I've included Virtual Tennis just because it's an easy one to test and is one of my favourite games on the PSP. Wipeout Pulse played really well on the PowerKitty X18S, but the LCD screen was really dull. Here, the game finally looks and plays great on a beautiful OLED screen. Finally, let's go over some GameCube games, and I used two emulators here, Dolphin and MMJR2. There's no Dolphin footage in this video, as it was pretty evident after a while that MMJR2 was consistently better. For most games, I didn't have to do any tweaks to the settings, all in all, I'd recommend just using MMJR2 if you can, and if it doesn't work, then try Dolphin. A reminder that you need to search for MMJR2 in Google search and download and install it via the GitHub page, while Dolphin can be found on the Google Play Store. The first game I tried was Auto Motorista, and unfortunately this is still a difficult game to run on either emulator, though it does perform slightly better on MMJR2. I wouldn't really recommend playing this as there's just too much slowdown to be enjoyable. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance didn't work well on either emulator, though it's a bit better on MMJR2. Still, that doesn't mean a whole lot when the game is chugging under 20 FPS. The good news is that I have tested the PS2 version, and while it starts off slow just like the GameCube version, after about 10 minutes it recovered and ran perfectly. I'll talk more about this in the next video.
F0GX also runs slow, though a bit better on MMJR2. If you want an F0 experience, play the Nintendo 64 version, as that runs perfectly. Mario Golf Toadstool Tour didn't even load on the Palkitty X18S, but here it loads and runs well. Medal of Honor Frontline plays at 60fps, but it did drop to 30fps, and it was a little uneven at times, but overall it's a good experience. Super Mario Sunshine is a difficult game to emulate, especially on lower end hardware where it has slowdown, texture loading, and sound issues. It's pretty good here and runs at a locked 30 FPS. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 had issues on the X18S as well, but here it ran perfectly for me and I really enjoyed what I played. Overall, I was really impressed with the Poco F3 and the Snapdragon 870. There were almost no issues running Dreamcast and PSP games. There are still some games on the GameCube that are slow, like Automotalista and F-Zero GX, but there's just going to be 10% of games on the GameCube that are going to be difficult to run. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. There's going to be more videos on the Poco F3, and we're going to look at PS2 emulation next. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.